Hello, welcome to Footprint. My name is Samuel Atamensa. We'll be right back and I will delve into the main issues. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome back to the program. It's Footprint. And today I'm here with um, a man whose surname has traversed the last four decades um, across academia, in politics, governance, um, international community, especially within the West African and African uh, um, 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 continent. Um, we all know the Ahoys, and when you say the Ahoys, they are always associated with the birthing and development of um, our Fourth Republic, especially the National Democratic Congress. But today I have with me um, Mr. Kwamena Ahoy. Thanks for um, allowing us into your home, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Um, um, so, Kwamena Ahoy, so you are also at home? Yes, every Saturday born, male Saturday born, Fanti okay. is at Kwamena. Uh -huh. and because two of us were born on Saturday, we split the name. You split the name. The senior so one took at home, and the junior one Pamela. I took Kwamena. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then you have Kwesi. We have Kwesi, oh. and we have five sisters. Wow. Who, because they are married, have lost their the mm -hmm. But I'm sure they they still pride themselves with, with oh, yes. their names. Oh yes, they do. Because you you have really uh, brought the name out. Um, but anyway, so here we are. Um, as a young person growing up in secondary school and in the university, we always heard the Ahoy, one Ahoy or another in the news. Um, you know, at some point, one was um, um, as a secretary for Fuel or Fuel and Power. Fuel and Power, and then you had a local government, and then um, you had the other one who who used to work in the castle, and then later GIPC. Um, you know well but today we are here because of your good self how you describe yourself um i should say that uh, i'm a very humble fancy uh, man who used to be a boy mm, who, who used to be what a boy <laughs> <laughs> the fourth <laughs> born of eight children of uh Mr. and Mrs. Ahoy of blessed memory. Mrs. Ahoy died just about four months ago at the ripe old age of 97. And um, we had very humble upbringing because our father died early. We had our upbringing in Kumasi. Um, but all of us, all eight of us did very well. Um, we schooled, we all went to school. We all had our first degrees, the three boys. Went to some of the most prestigious universities. I went to Harvard. Chrissy went to University of Maryland. I went to Oxford. And uh, I believe that we are very good at what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, that is why I think the name has gained some fame Whoa. in the country. Yes. Wh which secondary school did you attend? I did my O level at Ukwap, my secondary school, the best in West Africa. Oh, okay. At the uh, time, I guess. Uh, even today. Oh, you are sure? <laughs> so some of the people you met, uh, Pokuche. Yes, I said, I said uh, Robert Pukuche, now the special assistant to the senior minister. Quite a number of doctors, uh, Dr. Michael Osenyako in the U.S., Dr. William Edumtoso also in the U.S., Dr. Kwampipra, Mr. Kwampipra's brother, yeah. who was also my classmate. Quite a, quite a number of them. Wow. But the most memorable uh, <coughs> collection of Pukwari was that um, I made history there by forming a political party to contest as dining hall prefect. <laughs> the party was called SAF, Special uh, Student Action Front. Wow. You know, in Ukwap, my prefects were appointed. When <laughs> I went to Pukwak, I realized that prefects were elected. Elected. So I formed a political party for uh, the first uh, time. Uh, what, what was the outcome? Oh, I won the election. I won because the election. you had a Kumasi vibe already. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You had a Kumasi vibe already. Yes, that yes, must be yes. interesting. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's so good. I have very fond memories of uh, Upukwari. That's yes. correct. Mm. That's correct. Uwas, they yes. called it. And Ukwapmai was also Ukwas. Yeah, I have very correct. fond memories of Ukwas. Ukwas to Ukwas. Yes. So right. you attend both um, old students. You are associated with both yes, schools. Yes, both of them. But more with Ukwas than Uwas. Of course. Your O-level yes. will count better. Yeah. For, yeah. Mm. So from there you went to... Uh, I went to, to the University Faculty of Law at the University of Ghana. Um, this was 97 to 19... 19 71, 
1975, I went to Oxford to do, to do another first degree. No, they they call it the BCL, but it's a master's. Oh, okay. that's, that's the Bachelor of Civil Law. That's that's what they call it. But so that's it's, a, it's a postgraduate. Yes, it's a post postgraduate course. From there, I came back to the University of Ghana to lecture at the law faculty, and it was from there that I was captured into the revolution, uh, starting with a brief stint with the AFRC and then almost full time with the PNDC. Okay, so University of Ghana, what were some of your experiences? Who were some of the people who were there at the time you were lecturing? Oh, um, Professor, the late President Miller's or became a colleague lecturer. He actually taught me mm -hmm. when I was a student. He taught me commercial law and company law. Mm -hmm. But when I came back to teach, he was there. Mm -hmm. Chachuchikata taught me jurisprudence. When I came back to teach, he was there. Mm -hmm. Professor Akila Pasoya taught me. Professor Kwesibuche uh, taught me. Professor Albert Fiajo uh, taught me. Dr. Texan, late Dr. Texan. And quite a number He's of the one who worked at the presidency. Uh, no, no, he he was uh, appointed a high commissioner to Canada okay. by President Mills. Mills yes, yes. Mm. Well, so they were all there. Mm -hmm. But um, some of them joined you in politics. Um, Chachu, Kwesibuche, and at first, to a lesser extent, Professor Mills. Yeah, uh, he less. didn't join us in the PNDC period, but he was working for us a lot in the background. The especially tax, tax yes area. the tax area and also company law and in fact the whole of the mm. economic recovery program he was one of the technical yeah. backstoppers for the right. team that used to negotiate with the imf and the world bank quietly yes on the quiet oh nice anyway for those of you who thought that uh, president mills popped up from nowhere now you're hearing <laughs> so now tell me what was your own um association with uh Professor I Ivan Adamans at the time. I didn't know him when I was a student, but when I came back, um, he was then Dr. Ivan Adamans. The chemistry and, department. Yes, chemistry right. department. And uh, he and I joined, I, I met him in the club. Um, how did you hear about Jerry Rollins in the first place? Um, as I have indicated in the book, which you have not mentioned yet, um, the country at that time was very, very hard, very difficult, and I had actually de decided to leave. Uh, I had in, in Oxford, I had met, uh, I had made a friend, uh, Professor Muna Ndulu, from Zambia, and when he got, went back to Zambia, he was appointed the dean of the law faculty. So he uh, extended an invitation to me to join the faculty at Zambia and actually sent me a ticket. I was just about to leave when June 4th happened. And uh, because of what Jerry had done on May 15th, the previous month, which many of the leftists had associated themselves right. with, including myself, I decided... Openly? To, yeah, well, not openly at the time. I decided to stay on and see what would happen and whether I could, I, I could be of any assistance. Mm. Now, again, as I have explained in the book, before June 4th, you know, the... The SMC, the Supreme Military Council government under General Kufu at the time, had opened the floodgates for partisan politics. And political SMC parties, two. yeah, SMC2, political parties had been formed and they were traversing the country campaigning. That's correct. And Ivan Adai Mensa mm -hmm. had been identified, or he, he was actually the lead interviewer for the GTV in those days, yeah. in their intellectual programs. And he had been selected to interview the presidential candidates. There were nine of them. Dr. Hila Lehman, Mr. Victor Usu, Kennel so George, this is, Frank Benasco. This will be after the, the coup d'etat. Before, before June 4th. Oh, before June before 4th. June 4th. Okay. It, it, actually, the recording was done in May. Oh, okay. So, uh, Adai Mensah was to interview them. Then, just around that time, he was appointed by Dr. Hilal Liman as the general yeah. secretary of okay. the People's National Party, yeah. Liman's party. That's so cool. there was a clear conflict of interest situation. Mm -hmm. Unknown to me, he had whispered to the GTV that he thought I was the best person to replace him. Right. You know. So uh, they approached me, I accepted, and I did the interview. And I must say, it came out very, very extremely well. There were publications about an encounter between yourself and Mark Diamond Adi. Which was very funny. 
Remember? It is actually recounted in the book. Oh, you know? really? <laughs> um, it had to do with a question that I asked him. Mm -hmm. You know, before the interviews, I had done some background research into all, on all of them. And I had learned from the Central Revenue Department, which is today's uh, domestic tax division of the Ghana Revenue Authority. I learned from them that Diamond Adi operated a very popular uh, secondary school. It was called Jempi School. Jempi School. At Ghana Empire, Junction. Yes, Ghana Empire Secondary School. Yes. I learned from the Central Revenue Department that the school was not registered with the department. He himself was not a known taxpayer. He had never paid tax. The school <laughs> had never paid corporate tax. So I asked him that this is what I have found out about you. And that with this record, why should the people of Ghana vote for you to become the president? Whose taxes do you expect to use you know, to govern? Yes. And he exploded. He almost that, beat you up. Yes. Live he said, on TV. Hey, I was, no, unfortunately it was recording, a recording. Mm -hmm. He said, hey, you, I know your type. You have been employed by the CIA to come and spoil my chances. And then he jumped from his chair and was, was threateningly towards me. Wow. So, just as your producer is doing, I heard, cut, cut. So they cut the thing and all of them jumped in. Wow. And uh, I was saved. Wow. Uh, if they had not done that, I'm sure oh, that no. I would have been pummeled because <laughs> I was very tiny at the time. Uh, well, that guy had a lot of. Um, yes, yes. I, remember, I still remember, you know, presidential candidate. Yes. RDA, yes. Presidential no, candidate. Okay. You were not too young then. Yes. <laughs> so uh, they, they, they aborted the interview for the day. They asked us to come the next day, mm. which we did. And of course, I made sure that I didn't ask him any question about, about his tax. <laughs> yes, and the interview, we well, went through it uh, successfully. Yeah. Now, that I told that story. Because it was those interviews that catapulted me into yes, the limelight. So when Rolling Stage June 4th, mm -hmm. and GTV, again, it was the only you know, public yeah, uh, time, yeah. TV station, then they wanted to interview him. The condition he gave was that he would only be allow himself to be interviewed by that young law lecturer who interviewed the presidential candidates. So I think on 7th or 8th June, I did an interview with him for both the domestic and international audience mm -hmm. and that is what actually got me into politics then became i became I, I became noticed that was my first time of meeting rollins that was my first encounter with him and wow. we became friends after that and the, and the rest they say is history. history yes yeah but before we move on, on to the rollins issue you had another um near uh, bust up with victor's too uh, based on a question you asked him <laughs> yes, um, again, I have recounted that in the book. It, it was not really... Uh, it, it, okay, what happened was this. Victorzu had a reputation for arrogance. Mm -hmm. um, and he knew it. Because it was one of the, his weakest points. His opponent, political opponents always use it against him. So the very first question I asked him was, why do you think you are special? And he exploded. One time. Have I ever said I'm special? Who told you I'm special? You know, in a very irritated voice. Oh, no. And when he came down, I says, oh, sir, I'm sorry if I have offended you. But the thing is, you want to lead 10 million people of Ghana. You must have some qualities that make you special. And that is why I'm asking you, what makes you special? In other words, what qualities do you think you are bringing into the leadership position? It was very, very so difficult. Yeah. You know, very, and you could see, you could tell that it affected him throughout the interview yeah. because he realized that he had goofed. You know, <laughs> yes, he realized that he had, he had wow. goofed. There was another encounter with her. Uh -huh, Imo was Imo also Rayana. there. Imo His party Rayana. was called PAP, P A P, People's Action Party. party yeah. Yes. He also, um, after I had asked me a series of questions with which he was very uncomfortable. He just blurted out, young man, you are biased. Yep. And I said, yes, in your favor. <laughs> of course, like many people, he thought yeah, you could only be biased against something or yeah. against somebody. Yeah. He didn't know you could also be biased in favor oh, of somebody. Wow, so wow. again, he too, he was taken yeah. aback by, by that repost. No, so Imori Gala was the party chairman for No, Imori, Lima. I, yes, Imori Lima. Gala, he wasn't really the chair, he was the founder oh, yeah, of okay. the PNP. And he was the one who was tipped 
to, to be, be the, the presidential yeah, candidate. Yeah, yeah. But because of the position he held in the CPP and Ankoma, he had been banned from holding political and public office mm -hmm. by a decree at the time the elections were coming on. And so he is the one who discovered and brought in Hela Liman yeah. you know, to replace him. Good. So now, um, after everything, you were called to be part of the, um, the government. Is that correct? Yes, in 1982. Okay. Actually, so. in 31st December 1981. Because I was actually, I was with Professor Techua Menu moderating a New Year school class at Legon. Mm -hmm. When somebody, I've forgotten who, peeked into the room and beckoned me. And when I went out, he said, Jerry has done his thing again, and he's calling your name on air. So I left the class. I never went back. And then went and heard that he was actually calling my name to report at Gundabara. So I reported, and I got stuck there. So he, what, what he would then do is to record the message, which will be yes, every, every 30 minutes they were playing it, on, yes. on, on radio. Yes. Uh -huh. So you were invited to report. Yes, there were actually 10 names that he mentioned, he mm -hmm. called. I don't remember the rest. The only one I remember is T.A.B.D. Akun. He used to be, at the time, he was Secretary General of the NAT, Ghana National Association of oh, Teachers. Jesus, yeah. But he didn't report. I didn't see him. And he I, never showed up? No, he never showed even up. Even later? No, and I didn't see any of the others. Did you uh, ever hear of him again? No. Well, he became the Secretary General of the African Trade Union okay. Teachers, Teachers Association. Okay. They call it ATU. All oh. African teachers, something, something. Mm -hmm. I became, he became the second. You didn't want to be part of this one. <laughs> ah, well. <laughs> anyway, so, so that too. So, but there were other names that later on were mentioned on radio to report um, at the Gonda Barracks. Uh, if you are talking about those who got involved in government, there were other names that were not mentioned. For example, when I got there, I met Mr. PV of being there. Mm -hmm. you know, I met Mr. Chachichikata there. And I met a, a few others, and we were the ones who actually sat down and... So when you were going there, did you have an idea of the mission? Oh, I knew that a crew had been staged. Yeah, of course, but yes, your role, and, I mean... No, I didn't know my role, but I have explained in the book that when I got there, after about one hour, I was pulled out and taken to another part of Bema camp, where I met Brigadier General Nunu uh, Mensa and General Quinn. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and uh, they said that um, they were about to form a council, a ruling council, and they wanted me to be a member of the ruling council. I thanked them and told them that I thought I was too young and too inexperienced you know, to be a member of a ruling council, but I could play a supportive role in the council's secretariat. They wow. understood me and Which I got stuck. You did. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. for. Okay, so you are still watching Footprint on City TV. I'm here with Mr. Kwamna Ahoy, and we've just laid the foundation um, telling us how he got himself into <coughs> government. And this is just at the beginning. We'll take a short break. When we come back, he'll take us through life under the PNDC, working with Rollins, which happens to be the, the title of the book that he has written, which I'll be showing to you. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the program. This is Footprint. My name is Samuel Atamens. I'm here with um, the good professor, Professor Kwamina Ahoy. And where we've gotten to, we are going to talk about this book. Okay. The title is Working with Rollins, of course, Jerry Rollins. And um, I had to hurriedly go through this book, I must say. And I was telling Prof that... Um, it's for me about the most reflective account of and and reflective professional and academic account of the whole story of how Rollins and his team governed this country. Um, I don't know what he has to say to that, but this is the book Working with Rollins. <coughs> um, if you look at the book, he says that this book is not about Jerry Rollins. It's not about Pam Nahoy. It's not about the PNDC, it's not about the NDC, but it's a book about Kwamna Ahoy working with Jerry Rawlings and our working relationships, our ups and downs, our joint commitment to building a better Ghana um, than we found it. 
Uh, unfortunately, that commitment is actually the history of everything that happened from 1981 uh, to Rollins left government. So you young lawyer now found yourself in government. At the time, we are told that one thing that most of you um, did not bring your attention to is that you are not even paid salaries. And you are not even thinking about that. It is true that we were not paid salaries because quite, of, quite a number of us were working, we're doing two full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. For, from 1982 to 1993, I was a full-time lecturer at the law faculty, wow. the University of Ghana, and I was being paid by the University of Ghana. Mm -hmm. I was teaching about three courses at the University of Ghana, so it was very full-time. And I was also doing full-time work at the PNDC Secretariat. Wow. Of course, there were levels of salaries for, um, for ministers which we came to meet. Mm -hmm. So what happened was that the PNDC Secretariat was paying me the difference between my salary as a lecturer mm -hmm. and what I would have earned as a minister. minister. They, they call it top-up. So they were paying that top-up um, allowance. Proper so, socialist. <laughs> <laughs> they so, didn't want you to be rich. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> Um, we were also coming from a position of idealism. Right. You know, on right. campus, we had been preaching leftist, leftist idealism, socialism, equity, you know, and, um, and service to the nation, etc. And we took that into government. So, and because of the state in which we found the country at the time, mm -hmm. We thought that our first responsibility was to turn the country so, around yeah. economically, pol politically, and socially. Mm. So that was, was our main objective. Okay. If so, in the process, you know, mm. we were acknowledged by a token payment, that was by, really by the way. Mm -hmm. So what was your first responsibility? Um, between J January and August, I was actually operating as a kind of special assistant in Pres Chairman Rollins' office. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any specific schedule, but I was assigned responsibilities from time to time. For example, I remember my first major assignment was to join a delegation to Lagos to try and negotiate with President Shehu Shagari mm -hmm. to restore oil supplies to Ghana because mm -hmm. In protest against our revolution, he had cut off oil supplies, mm -hmm. and uh, we were going through extreme hardships. So this was in '92. No, this is '82. Oh, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. '82. 82. 82. Yes, '82. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. under the leadership of General Nunu Mensa, President Kufo was actually released from prison to join the delegation. And oh, okay. I, yes, he was I still in prison him. at the time. Yes, you know all the all the officials and parliamentarians of the Third Republic were in custody. Mm -hmm. We didn't call it prison; they were in. Preventive yeah, custody. custody yeah. So he was. So you went for him. Us. Yes, I went for him, and uh, we went was and successfully. That under your influence, and uh, your personal influence. Uh, no, I was requested by President Ro Chairman Rollins. Why would to he? Go and why because he, he knew that I knew him, and he knew that we were associated. Yeah, but what I'm saying, why did they choose President Kufo to come out of prison? Oh, they said he had, he had a certain relationship with President Shehu Shagari. Okay. And he, we thought, and he, he proved very useful. When okay, he, but he agreed when you went there? Oh, yes, we went. He, 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 gave, just, some, he gave some conditions, which are in the book, mm, uh, which okay. I don't want to go into. Because <laughs> if I give out too much, people will not no, buy. No, people will buy anyway. Uh, but he, bought, he gave two conditions, mm -hmm. both of which uh, Rollins agreed mm -hmm. to fulfill. So we went with him and successfully did the negotiation. We had the likes of um, Justice D.F. Annan um, and the rest who were part of the PNDC proper. What was your relationship with the PNDC, um, no, the membership? I had an excellent relationship with all of them. Yazana actually joined us in 1983. He, she was not, he was not a founding member of the PNDC, but he joined us in 1983. Now, around 1983, after we had gone through some very difficult patches, you know, so many attempted coup d'etats. That's correct. Um, and it was like one every month. Yes. 
and uh, in fact, there was a, a one week in which there were three, three yes. in which culminated in the one that almost succeeded, 19th June 1983, when Halid Dujua and his corporal Halid Dujua and his team actually took over Broadcasting, broadcasting house, house and announced that the PNDC had been That's overthrown. Correct. Yes, That's but uh, we managed to flash. And then they ran away. Yes, they ran. They 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 they, <laughs> they, 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 they ran away. Hmm. And now after that, the far left of the PNDC system actually dissolved. They either went into exile or they went underground. And I think Rollins decided that it was time to change the face of the PNDC. So he began bringing in elements from the right. Mm -hmm. uh, Jasasana was one, one of them. them. Uh, Mrs. Susan Al Hassan was not so much to the right. She was a centrist, mm -hmm. but she was also brought in uh, Nathan Kwao was brought in as an advisor, mm -hmm. and so many other. But he uh, was people. a solid one. Yes, very solid. Anthony Wood and others, they were all brought into the PNDC system, and I think they helped stabilize mm -hmm. the Bring system to, yes, to a very, to a very large. Because extent. Nathan Kwao had been a headmaster before. Yes, and his, Academy. And yes, civil servant. Yeah, very, very high. Top level civil servant. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He was an institution, I, and, I'm and he you. really, he really helped. Uh, the regime at the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, all, you asked about my relationship with them. I had a very good relationship. I was managing what we call the judicial and quasi-judicial institutions of the organs of the, of the revolution. Mm -hmm. And I was actually there from 1982 until 1987 when uh, the PNDC camped about 27 of us in Akusi you know, to try and come out with a blueprint for decentralization because I think that was when the, 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 the talk about eventual return to constitutional rule had started mm -hmm. and the idea was to begin from the bottom yeah. with a local government system. So we went, we had come to Inakuse and we came out after three weeks with a small booklet. Who's that the blue book thing? Yes. Okay. The official title was district political authorities and modalities for district level elections and the cover was blue so the media immediately uh, named it the blue book and it, now even you have just mentioned it so it became the blue book now at that time i was a coordinator for investigations vetting and tribunals totobi kwachi was a pndc secretary for information, information but he had had an accident and i had been asked to act as a PNDC Secretary for Information. So when we finished the assignment, we were tasked. There was a body known as the no National Commission for Democracy under Justice Annan. Yeah. We were, it was tasked to take the blue book around the country to get the buy-in of oh, Ghanaians. Yes. So um, we took the book around, and as the Acting Secretary for Information, I was the lead speaker after Justice Annan. And I think we did a very good job. Uh, the guy, they made a few modifications were made, you know, which we incorporated. And then when we came back, uh, Rollins said, called me and said, well, since I have so successfully marketed the book, I should yeah, implement the proposals in the book. So he moved me from coordinator to secretary for local government. And so my first task was to convert the proposals into, in the blue book into legislation. Mm -hmm. So in 1988, we came out with the local government law of 1988, PNDC law 207. That was when the district assemblies, the district assemblies were first mentioned in the blue book, then given legislative cover in PNDC law 207. The district level elections were held for the first time in November, December 1988 and January 1989, and the district assemblies were inaugurated in March 1989. And the rest, as they say, is history. So 92 elections and then 93, you were appointed again? Yes. The process for transition actually started in, with the district assemblies. And it's important because I was involved in all of that. Because when the district assemblies came on stream, then we used them as the basis to invite suggestions for the political structures above the district level. And so we went around the regions, you know, met with the assemblies and invited other stakeholders. And then the ideas that we, we got, we put together uh, into a document, 
a book that the NCD calls Evolving a True Democracy. It is in that document that we stated, with Jasana as chairman, that the preference of the people of Ghana was for a return to multi-party democracy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, people were very skeptical when, it when we started. But when we submitted that report, as soon as it was submitted, President Rollins, or Chairman Rollins, had put together a team that was called um, Committee of Experts Constitution, chaired by Nana Dr. S.K.B. Asante. It included members like Dr. Kudia Farijan, who be, later became the EC uh, chairman, uh, the Domahine at the time, Dr. Nana, something I've forgotten, Mrs. Justice Ani Jaji, the late, who was a court of appeal judge, um, and, and others. There were nine of them. Mm. So as soon but, as... But Mr. Um, Jaheni was not part of it. No, he... He was part of the interim national elector INEC. With John Sofori Boatin. Yes, okay. with Josiah. Josiah Sofori yes. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, the ND, NCD document was immediately handed over to the Committee of Experts. Then they put together, they converted it into constitutional proposals. Those proposals were then put before a consultative assembly, which was the most controversial steps in the process of transition because people objected to the com composition uh, of because the they said, yes, assembly, because yeah. they said it, we had included butchers, headdresses, apetashi distillers, etc. You know, and and Kofi Kumsi's Ghanaian chronicle yes, was, was loud. Time. Yes, was very, 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 loud. very loud. In fact, so much so that the Ghana Bar Association, which was giving representation on it, they boycotted it. Mm -hmm. And the National Union of Ghana students also boycotted it. But that body debated the proposals and came out with a draft constitution for the fourth republic mm. now that draft constitution was immediately put to a referendum which was held on 28th april 1992 and the referendum was a two-part question the referendum question was a two-part question do you accept the constitution submitted by the consultative assembly to be the constitution of Ghana to come into force on 7th January 1993. This referendum was held on 28th April 1992. So if you said yes, you were accepting the constitution and you were also accepting the effective date of 7th January 1993. That is why the 1993 constitution is referred to as the 1992 constitution mm -hmm. because it was approved in uh, 1992. About 93% of the electorate voted in favor yeah. of the constitution, and that is how the Fourth Republic was born. born. Good. All right, so this is still Footprint, and I'm with Professor Kwamna Ahoy. Everything he's saying and more will be found in this book, Working with Rawlings. And so um, he will later tell us how to um, get a copy of the book. And um, I have read this book, and um, I tell you, the the but but kudos to the likes of Kofi Kumsin and 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 I'll tell you why um, I'll tell you why after this break we'll be right back. Okay. Welcome back. This is Footprint on City TV, and I'm here with Professor Kwamna Hoy. I I know you you you've been following, but there's a lot more you will get if you if you if you. Um, I bought this book and um, we'll be telling you where to get it working with Rollins and for those of you who are even look even academic references those of you who are writing essays about governance in Ghana and uh, look a lot if you don't have the full story here definitely you have the lead that will lead you to something now I talked about Kofi Kumsin reason I talk about Kofi Kumsin is that there are lots of things that I saw in this book I read in this book which Kofi Kumsin had given us hints about. He probably may not have had the full story accurately, but, you know, uh, the, the fragments, uh, the, the issues that were, you know. Uh, and so I think he did a, a, a good job. For instance, we had heard at the time that um, Rollins was not too happy um, letting go of his PNDC, um, you know, and allowing multi-party democracy. Prof, you were there. How true was that? 
Well, it was, it, it was true to a, a certain extent. Um, you know, after all, uh, Rollins had overthrown a democracy, a multi-party democracy. And um, if he thought it was the best form of government, maybe he may not have overthrown it. So getting him to give up power and lead us into another multi-party democracy was not a decision that was to be taken lightly right, by yeah, him. Yeah. But the but, fact that he brought people like yourselves yes. along would also throw out the indication that he wanted to legitimize his yes. Yeah. Yes, so um, maybe at the end of the day, we were the ones who prevailed on him mm -hmm. uh, to and do that because shows. we met made, we made two arguments to him. First of all, domestic opposition to the PNDC was coalition. The students, the intellectuals, the middle class, etc., they, they had begun serious agitation for a return to constitutional rule. And then secondly, we said we were doing a revolution. But revolutions all over the world were collapsing. Mm. Eastern Europe had collapsed. Straight. The, US, the Soviet Union the had collapsed. The and... Berlin Wall had come mm. down, and so on and so forth. So we, we urged upon him that we could not be in a state of permanent revolution. And that at some point we needed, yeah, we would be, need yeah. to hand over to, or we would need to uh, transit into constitutional rule. Mm. It took a lot of effort, and I must give the credit to Justice Annan and mm -hmm. Captain Chikata. You know, mm -hmm. they were most influential in getting him Managing to come around. the whole yes. program. Yes, but yeah. at the end of the day, once he accepted it, he led the charge. Okay. And he was very, very enthusiastic about the, pro the, the processes leading to constitutional rule. Great. And so once the veil was, was lifted, um, there was then the formation of the political parties at the time. Now tell me quickly, between the Eagle Party and, and the, P, the, the NDC, now, what was the story? There's no story, you know. Oh, there uh, is. <laughs> uh, Eagle, Eagle Party came up first, you know. When the rumors about a return to constitutional rule started, a group of people got together and said that they would want to sponsor Jerry Rollins to lead a party. So they formed what they call the Eagle Club. Mm -hmm. So the Eagle Party actually started as the Eagle well, Club. Yeah, yeah. Now, when the ban on political party was lifted and they wanted to register the Eagle Party, it was actually Eagle, E-A-G-L-E. The INEC, International Electoral Commission, then under Josiah Ufori Boateng, Justice Josiah Ufori Boateng, refused to accept the name and the symbol because he said the eagle was part State of our national uh, coat of arms and therefore it would be inappropriate for a political party to appropriate it as its, as its own. So as for the eagle, it was not accepted, but they cleverly changed the eagle. name from eagle to eagle and they said it stood for every Ghanaian living everywhere. everywhere yeah. you know. so, now, as that was going on, the PNDC itself, this club was formed outside of the PNDC system. Who were the, who were the leaders? Oh, there's Daniel Furata. Daniel Furata was one of them. Then was Michael something. Susudis part Michael Susudis was part of them. Quite a number of people. Mm -hmm. The PNDC system itself was also holding Looking consultations. Own, yeah. They were not, or we were not very sure whether we could win an election. So we sent emissaries around the country. And they came back with a report that not only was the PNDC very popular, but that it would win any election if Jerry Rollins was the leader. So we decided to form a party. In fact, we, we discussed along these, these lines that either we will build a house or we will rent a house or we will abandon the house. Building the house was forming our own party. Uh, renting a house was joining one of the established political traditions. Yes, yes. And abandoning the house means you know, ending PNDC and everybody yes. find your yeah, own way. Yeah, but at the end of the day, we decided that we will build a house. And we, in the dis discussions, because they said PNDC was popular, they said, okay, we have to find a way of letting that name remain in the ears of the electorate. Mm -hmm. Since the P in the PNDC was provisional, provisional. If let's we were ending the provision, let's drop the P, retain the NDC, and then I remember the words were over here. Say, you Buglon people, go and find something that the NDC will stand for. Mm. And that's how we came up with the National wow. Democratic Congress. So that's how the NDC uh, was, was. Very, 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 very intriguing yes. how 
uh, how the connectedness. Yes. Um, very nice. I'm sure a lot of us are hearing this for the first time. <laughs> so come NDC, and you are still part of it, and um, you know. Um, because we don't have time, we we'll, we'll just want to talk about some of the major issues. Rollins was there, um, Rollins 1, okay. Rollins 2. There was Rollins 1, there was Rollins 2. The major incident in that, in, in that period, of course, uh, you know, the PNDC went into an alliance with the... N Sorry, the NDC went into an alliance with the NCP, NCP yeah. the National Convention Party. Yeah. And therefore, the leader of the NCP, Kohon Ken Senaka, you know, as part of the negotiations, was foisted on Jerry Rollins as his running mate. So I became, like the word foisted. Yes, yes. <laughs> I it, thought it, you it, went into an alliance. Uh, the, but, but it, it comes with an exchange. No, yes, it comes with an exchange. Uh, the, the personality, Jerry Rollins, his choice was not, his preference was not Aka. I am sure if Aka had a, a preference, he wouldn't have chosen <laughs> him as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, he became the vice yeah. president, mm -hmm. and uh, from day one, you know, things were not good between them. You know, um, it led to a situation. But a lot of the fanties were expecting you and your and your and your quote and unquote fanti caucus to save a car. No, a car was beyond salvation. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Stubborn cat. <laughs> yes, very stubborn cat. <laughs> no, especially when the problems reached their climax yeah. with this his affair with that little girl that created or Jimmy Mayali that created all the problem. That's when he became even more stubborn. And so we had, we were faced with a, an, an impossible situation. Yeah. But because it was Jerry who was at the receiving end, mm -hmm. Ghanaians, op Ghanaian opinion leaders, I think we were very happy that it was happening to Jerry. Because here you had a situation where the vice president of the ruling government was also the vice presidential candidate of the opposition party. Yeah. Yeah. And he was attending cabinet meetings and making governance impossible. You know. Is that why Rollins beat him? He didn't beat him. He gave uh, him a no, blow. No, he didn't give him a blow. I was but, at that cabinet. But he meeting. tore his, his He his didn't clothes. tear his coat. He did not. Well, you were not. I was there. There but was a uh, his stop. clothes. His clothes got torn. Do you want to listen to an <laughs> eyewitness account, or you want to substitute, you know, <laughs> imagination? <laughs> there was there was an incident. Mm -hmm. Both of them fell on the ground between the two of them. Yes, but. Commodore Steve Obimpe, who is a military person, he had been Navy commander. He was seated next to Akao. He very, very quickly jumped into the free, separated, separated them. Separated them yes. from fighting. Yes, and Aka you no know, left. His coat was not torn. That's it was strange. When, yes. That's very we all, strange. We also saw a, a, a picture in which his coat was torn. Okay. But when he was leaving the cabinet, it wasn't meeting, torn. Not, no. And that's very strange. Yes. In fact, that's very wicked. Because he happened. went to the IGP to report that he had been assaulted by President Rollins. I was there. Yes. I and, was at the so, Cantorbank yes. police station so where he, he came he, with a torn coat. Yes, clothes. he needed evidence. There so was he better did it evidence himself. than a, coat, a torn coat. I don't know how it Somebody happened. must have done yes. it. But I am telling you that. Mm -hmm. The incident was of such a nature that his coat could not have been torn. But that's a pity. And when he was leaving, his coat was not torn. Wow. But it is true that there was an incident. Anyway, mm. so as a result of that, um, we had to look for a running mate yeah. for, um, for yeah, President Rollins. Right. And a lot for, fell on me. Mm -hmm. I suggested that Professor Mills would be a good candidate. Mm -hmm. So President Rollins sent me to go and talk to him. I went with my wife to his, his house, we met him and his wife, we spoke. I was not successful. He was still in Ligon. Yeah, he was still in Ligon. Well, I was not successful, so I got my brother Atu involved. He, I, he and Atu were closer than he and I. So Atu managed to convince him, and he came into the picture. And then we went for the election, Rollins won, and Mills became the vice, vice president. president. Yes. Wow. So then he became vice president, uh, Rollins too. Rollins too, he became the vice president, and then when we were getting into the 2000 election, mm -hmm. that's when the was a, yeah, the, that's when the problems began because as a party, we did not have a succession plan mm -hmm. after Jerry Rollins, and so a lot of people had lined up their boots and they were waiting. They, they were waiting, and I think they were putting a lot of pressure on President Rollins, and as a way of diverting that pressure. I think he went and made that declaration in Swedru. 
many people did not actually know the exact wording of that declaration. He didn't say that he didn't say that Mills was a successor. What he said was that if Mills decided to contest, he Rollins would support Mills. That's the way he, he put it. But by making that declaration, he had signaled to all the interested parties that yeah. this is my chosen yeah. successor in yeah. whom I am well pleased. Okay. But isn't that strange? Well, see, I see the contradiction with that, even that statement, because um, being in the media at the time, very actively, I remember that we, we, we got um, some shipments about Nana Kunedu for 2000 election. Um, which for us in the media um, indicated that she had nursed the, the thinking of also becoming a flag bearer. Uh, and your husband was endorsing somebody else. I think that's where the contradiction came. Yes, I didn't see that consignment you are talking about. I, I heard about it. Mm -hmm. All of us heard about it. But I don't think they were ever offloaded. So, uh, okay, they, well, we, we heard. I wouldn't yeah, say we, that we, I saw yeah, it we myself. We, are, we, are, we also, yeah. also heard. So when I talked about people who we were lacing their boots, I believe that Nana Kredu was one of them. Well, later she... she yes, she, I mean, later she, she showed by yeah. challenging Professor Mills that she was, she was also interested. So um, I am not sure you are calling it a contradiction. But I am saying that maybe Jerry didn't want to do something that would appear to be a dynastic okay. succession that makes sense. from me to my yeah. wife. I suspect yeah. he didn't want yeah. that. Yeah. But it was not easy for him to tell the Nakrin directly that don't do it, you can't do it. Because Jerry is a liberal, he wouldn't want yeah. to dictate to his wife. So his way of indirectly telling her and the others who were also interested was by endorsing Professor Mills. And it happened in Swedru, on the soil of Swedru, yes, in the central yes, region. Yes. Very yes, close to your hometown, yes, Agunan yes, Sabah. Yes, yes. Wow. No, <laughs> no my hometown is Agunan Mankrong. Oh, Mankrong? Yes. Okay, okay. okay. It's in the same yeah, the general same, area. Yeah, the same yeah. district. Oh, yes. lovely. Mm -hmm. Now, see, after this one, I still remember um, the whole Congress, which really cemented the President Mills. What's your own account of this whole Congress? I have given a very detailed account of that uh, Congress. I have I narrated four incidents, you know, which I think created problems for um, for that Congress. Uh, first of all, the choice of the Congress theme was problematic. The choice of the, the, the theme was continuity in change. Now, this was interpreted by the MPP and others to mean personalities were changing, but policies well, would not change. There, yeah. Yeah. And the expectation of people, including some people in the NDC, was that Jerry had been there for 19 years. If he was leaving, then some of his policies should change. So if Mills was coming to continue his policies, then why even have him at all? So that was one of the uh, yeah. problems. The other was that Many of the, in fact, a vast majority of the Congress delegates came there in Atamel's t shirts. Mm -hmm. Rightly so, yeah. But at that time, Jerry was the incumbent president. Mm -hmm. And so it was almost like, ah, even when I, we have not left, you know, <laughs> you want to forget about us. But, Prof, they were sharing the T-shirts right at the, at the Congress grounds, yes, under I the know. trees there. Yes, I know. In whole, they know. were sharing. Yes, the point I am making is that for some of Jerry's supporters, they thought it was a betrayal of Rollins oh, yeah, because he was still that. president and they expected him to be there. But for those who were sharing and those who were wearing, they, their argument was that it is Professor Mills who is going to be on the ballot. Mm -hmm. And we have come to endorse him as the candidate. Therefore, we must begin to market him yeah. by advertising him. So you wore the T-shirts too, yourself? I wore it. I had a little problem which I, I, I have recounted oh, in the book. Tell us more. No, no, no. If I tell you too much, the people will not buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> Let them go and buy. But I had a little problem. It, was, it wasn't just because me and Toto Oh, you we, both had your nice yes, Atamel we T-shirts. Yes, and we had to change. And you were threatened. Yes, we had to then. change. Because what kind of problem? Problem? <laughs> Yes. Mm. And then, of course, I said four, but I forgot the thing. But the major EU was the statement that Mills was supposed to have made that I will yeah. consult Rollins morning, noon, and night. Yeah. 
Um, there's a history behind it. Yeah. And in this book, I have admitted a responsibility. I was the one who crafted that statement. Mm -hmm. And I actually sent it to him when he was on the stage. Mm -hmm. It wasn't part of his, yeah. of, of yeah. his original well, just speech. to give the man some comfort. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I have, was... I've gone into some detail in the book okay. as to why but, I did it. Prof, before we go, Ajima Rollins was still not happy about this whole arrangement. What but I can say is that... Mm -hmm. Because of her challenge to President, pre President Mills in mm -hmm. 2011, or is it 2011? Yeah. No, actually, Ma I'm still talking about 2000. Yes, I'm saying that because of her later challenge, later. Uh -huh. it could, you could be right in saying mm -hmm. that she was not happy in 2000 when all these things were happening because she always had an eye on the trophy. Okay. That's, yeah, that's, but that's but we were also told, and I read from the Ghanaian Chronicle, um, that Ajima Rollins and Nadu Mills at the time had, had serious uh, problems. Yes, there was an incident involving the two of them, which I have interpreted as the beginning of the problem between Rollins and, uh, and Mills. I, I refer to it as the Afiade Nyiba incident because it happened at no, Afiade Nyiba. No, no, in the greater Akara region, the, the, um, the Dangbe, Dangbe West. It's in the Dangbe West district of the greater Akara region. Again, it's one of those that I want. One of the things I want people to read about, I don't want okay. to talk about well, it. But there was, yeah. there was, there was a, a problem between them, as, wow. as a result of which Nadu Mills pulled out of the campaign. Wow, uh, midstream. Yes, the campaign for her husband. Because that's that's actually supposed to be her area, is that yes. correct? That, yeah, that she that comes from there. Yeah. Then she was she was campaigning in that area for her husband. Wow. But after the incident, she pulled out. And that was it. Yeah, Nadu continued campaigning for Mills, Mills. but mm. Nadu pulled out. But again, quick one. You, you, so 2000, and then, um, but later on, we also heard that the Ahoys um, went their separate ways with, with the Rollinses. Um, can you confirm that? A number of incidents occurred, I have gone to, but I think the major one that really created the problem was in 2006 when Pro 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 Professor Mills was supposed not to be well. And uh, Rollins, I think, was trying to find a replacement for him as the NDC candidate. So he approached my senior brother, Atuahoy, to contest President Professor Mills in the NDC Primaries, primaries yeah. yes. And uh, we took offense because um, Jerry knew the role that Atua had played in getting Professor Mills out of the comfort of academia to come and join the turbulence of politics, Ghanaian yeah. politics. Uh, he knew that there was a very close camaraderie between us and especially Atu and uh, Professor Mills. Yes, yes. And uh, therefore, as I have recounted it in the book, mm -hmm. I thought that he was asking us to betray, betray. The Professor, Professor At this Mills. point, what, what was the role of Eddie Annan? Eddie Annan was not yet in the race. But I yes. think when Atom refused... Uh, the lot uh, fell on yes, him. Yes, Ediana was... was, was well, he was a very close associate of Mills when yes. Mills was vice I mean, president. Mills was literally living in his house. Every morning when he was vice president, before he went to work, he would go and swim in his house for three hours. And they used hours. to walk around countries yes. together. Yes, they were, they were very close friends. And, you know, um, later, Ediana himself regretted the action. Of course I've explained it here. Yeah. And that is what would have happened if Atu had agreed say, to, yeah. con to contest him. So it was from that time that you know, uh, we got upset. Oh, the, the, the drifting apart started. And it got worse when Mills became president and Jerry began his attacks on him. Oh, he attacked Mills? Oh, were you not in Ghana? Well, I mean, I'm here. I've been in Ghana throughout the, the, the yes. account of this book, but but, but you have hear, a lot to say more than I. Didn't you hear about Atam Mochriman? No, that was a Mochriman's reference. Do you think that it was just for nothing that he told that story? No. And the Konongo Kaya, do you know what Konongo Kaya means? Konongo with this particular reference, no, I don't. I, mean, I know Konongo Kaya generally, yes. but yes. with reference to Atamils. The man's name was Atta. Atta the Mochiman. Yes, Atta man. Who born who, dog? Who, yeah, who, who used to dress people nicely when their bodies were brought to Tetekwashi. Uh, uh -huh. And he himself, nobody was very sure what was going to happen to him when he died. Wow. And then Konongo Kaya, the man, he cannot, he's not well, so he cannot govern. He won't leave it for somebody else to come and 
do it. I mean, there are all kinds of innuendos, yeah, you know. Yeah. And uh, so it, that's yeah. actually rather deep in the cracks. Yes, because I have, as I have explained, there was one particular incident which caused President Mills nearly to resign. In fact, mm. he resigned. The only thing that saved this country. As president? Yes. The only thing that saved this country was that he called to tell me that he was resigning. And I, he spoke in Fanti? Yes, we used to. What's it? What's it? Mejai. Mejai. And I was in a brief. I was at an IA workshop at a brief. He said, come now. At the Jericho Kikenwo, Tamalina, because people are yeah, have to speak no, no. English. No, no, feel free. Mm. Have you heard what Jerry you know, has gone to say about me in Tamale? I said, no, I haven't heard. He said, get the audio and listen to it because I have resigned and I don't want anybody to try to stop me. Mama, right? Yes. And I said, Mr. President, I believe that you have resigned. You have decided to resign. But I also believe that you are not sure you have taken the right de decision. You want a second opinion. Otherwise, you wouldn't you have, have called, called to me. tell That's me. Correct. I would have heard about it in the media. So please, can you let me consult my gang? That's how I put it. He said, OK. So I called so Captain right. Chikata. And he said, I should arrange for us to go and see him. And then I should bring him to be quiet. So on a Sunday evening, we went. Oh, well, didn't go. No, so. you didn't. Uh, there were some, I, 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 you know, there are different issues, diff, different conspirators. <laughs> <laughs> so we went, and he had actually packed his things, his suitcases, everything, ready to go. Oh, you mean he was leaving? Yes. Ah, why? So we talked for about four hours to about twelve midnight, and we managed to convince him to stay because we were taking certain corrective measures, etc. We were successful in those measures. Mm. And um, as a result, he stayed. But otherwise, he, he, was, he was going to resign on account of you know, the, the way, yeah, the way that he thought Jerry Rollins was treating him. Wow. Anyway, so this is Professor Kwam Nahoy's account working with Jerry Rollins. Now look, it has a lot more detail uh, in this book. So, um, Prof, how do we get copies of the book after the lunch on thursday they will be available the book will be available at the following bookshops the kingdom bookshop at legon epp bookshop labadi bachona total filling station citrus bookshop anc mall kingdom bookshop usu vidya bookshop usu airport city shell filling station my own office, Center for Democratic Transitions, Ghana, near the European Union office, opposite Aquinas Secondary School, EPP Bookshop, Legon, Holiday Inn Hotel Shop at Airport City. And you can also go to it online from the publishers, www.digibookspublishing.com. They are also arranging to have it on sale on, at Amazon. Yeah, mm, so, okay. yeah, so it will be. I, I see that you don't Amazon. have outlets in Kumasi. Maybe in, in, um, in fact, I was going to talk about it. Since these promotions began, yeah. I have been inundated with calls. Yeah, but EPP will be there. EPP, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, in fact, I just about just before you came in, I had a call from Wa. They mm -hmm. he asked me how many copies do you have in a box. I said thirty. They bring us ten. I say, what? <laughs> so uh, I so, know that there's a market for okay, it. Okay, so working we, we with will, Rollins yes, is a we, book, we, and we. it's by Professor Kwamna Ahoy. And I say that this, by far, is the most reflective, professional, academic, contextualized account of the period between 1982 to 2000. Prof, thank you very much thank for you very your time. Much. Unfortunately, we cannot shake hands. Yes, by, 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 by the reason of COVID. <laughs> but we are still very grateful. Very A big God you bless much. you. For people like yourselves who have um, had experience and have decided to put it down into writing for, for the next Posterity. generation to be able to make good references to. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. And for you that are listening to us, uh, it's been Footprint with Prof. Kwan My name is Samuel Atamensa. Thanks for watching.